Why does it use database in this? <laughs> <laughs> Hallo, mein Name ist Hannes Hahn. Ich arbeite hier für knapp zwei Jahre auf der Taiwan Foreign Language High School und ich freue mich an diesem Projekt mit teilzunehmen. Hallo, mein Name ist Irene Kao. My students know me as Miss Irene. I teach second year Advanced English Conversation 2. Alright, hi, my name is Miss Stacy. I am in charge of second year Advanced English, uh, English Education. Advanced English Conversation, and I am Miss Dominica. I am in charge of the, I don't know which one of the three classes it is, but the Advanced English Conversation one class. Oh, not bad. All right. All right. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. What the same score? Woo. <laughs> Bam. Ah, really? Ah. Not that one. Really? Not that one. Hmm. So, uh, so the first question oh, I, I, I did correct, I and the second one also. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm quite satisfied. Okay. I'm surprised. All the ones I answered, I got right, but then I didn't finish three out of the eight. Got it. I mean, it's it's doable. It's just it, it's time consuming. And I know that the way you study for these is that you take practice exams over and over and over and over again. That doesn't make you fluent in English. It makes you fluent at taking exams. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it feels like you study not for the language, you study for making a, a good test. The, this kind of thing, biodiversity invasibility hypothesis. Biodiversity and hypothesis, hypothesis are words that I'm pretty sure you study for the Sunan. Invasibility, I have never heard about before. So basically what it's trying to do is it's giving you something called jargon. Jargon is a highly technical term. And then you have to figure out what it means based on everything around it, which is an effective question in some regards. But if you asked a native speaker what invasibility means, they would probably go, what? <laughs> this is not a commonly used term at all. And the other thing is, um, I struggled with this question because anything with numbers is difficult for me. I did not do well at math. Like have some parts that are memorization, some parts that are specifically testing, maybe not necessarily like grammatically wrong, but like more apply based on what you've read for the passage. So it would be maybe longer passages, but multiple questions would be for that one passage. And so you'd be able to read something and be like, okay, I understood it or this or that and answer multiple instead of like little passage question, little passage question. And so just more, a more, a bigger variety of skills in the test. Because memorizing isn't going to help you when you like, go to New York. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? No one says that. So. I could change the student English test. Well, the way I would like to change it that would never happen is in terms of student skills, the most difficult skill for students is uh, writing. Is that the same case in German? Yeah, I, I much rather prefer also part of the German test that you have to write a text and not just always fill up the, the right answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the reason why I know that's never going to happen is writing is much more subjective and you can get partial credit on writing, which also means that someone needs to be fluent enough to grade all of the writing. If there was a little bit of uh, what's called free answer, that would actually be better at proving fluency in terms of English language skill, but that's never going to happen because there's too much room for one person thinks this is the correct answer, but another person thinks that that's not the correct answer. A lot of times students, when they write in English, they're grammatically correct, but semantically awkward, which means a lot of times the Korean students really focus on getting a perfectly grammatically correct sentence but it doesn't really make sense in English. So there's not enough people to evaluate that type of fluency, which is why I think it would be good if there's a writing section added to the Suna, but I know it will never happen. 
we were required to take classes from all like all the classes were divided into like different categories they were set in different categories and we were required to take at least one class from each of the categories so at least one from languages at least one from uh math at least one from sciences at least one from arts blah blah blah, blah. um but we had a choice uh to as to like what classes within those categories we want to take so for me instead of taking art i took choir for four years of high school uh, instead of taking pe i took theater for two years instead of taking physics for two semesters i took three semesters of chemistry so i had a lot of um choice as to like who who i want to be what i want to do what i want to study but the biggest difference like how we were able to go about choosing our own courses was we didn't have homerooms mm -hmm. we had homerooms that we went to for like 15 minutes the teacher checked our attendance and then we left because every single class you would have a new group of students that you would have class with so the students who wanted to do the criminal science class would go to that classroom at that time this math class and so you ended up being able to literally have class with every single student in the grade instead of just, you know, 20 some students in one classroom. So let's look at this in terms of like day one. Guarantee you there's at least 10 students who they don't want to go to the school and their parents are making them, right? Well, that's not fair to the kid because I also, I think I found this out last year. You guys can't be doctors. Like you guys can't go to like a science track, but you've essentially been forced as a middle schooler to plan out your entire career. Like what if in high school you watch like a really cool documentary or like, I don't know, some life event happens and you suddenly want to be a doctor. Like you can't do you that. You gotta change schools. And I think, I think that's, kind of ridiculous coming from my per point of view it is. because for me like we kind of decided our fate in like junior year so second year for you guys of high school where okay I need to start thinking about what I want to do as my you know for my future and then I can decide what college to go to but then if you decide, okay, no, I'm okay. I don't want to do that anymore. You can switch majors. You can switch universities. And it's so easy and, no, and everybody's like, oh, cool, okay. Enjoy your new thing. But for Korean students being like, this is what you will do. That's just insane to me. Yeah, so I know from personal experience, if someone else makes a choice for you, it's just gonna take longer for you to get to where you want to be so don't get in my way like no one should get in your way that's that's my yeah thing yeah no one should get in your way of making your own decisions about your life because mm -hmm. in the end you're you're gonna go for it anyway so stop wasting anyone's time go for it Come 예를 들어 수학 아무 데도 안 쓰인다. 과학 안 쓰여. 쓰이는 거 사실상 영어밖에 없다. 이렇게 얘기하는데 다 쓰여요. 물론 안 쓰일 수 있는데 다 도움이 됩니다. 그러니까 어, 자기가 하는 거에 그냥 최선을 다하는 모습을 봤으면 좋겠습니다. 맨날 사실은 맨날 보는 모습들인데도 또 그렇게 영상으로 보니까 좀 안쓰러운 마음이 제일 큰거 같아요. 그냥 어, 해야 되는 건 맞는데 그래도 너무 고생하는 거를 보니까 또 마음이 아프고 아, 어떻게 좀더 나은 교육을 이끌어갈 수 있나 혹은 그런 거를 할수 있을까 이런 고민도 좀 하게 되는 좋은 계기가 된거 같아서 너무 좋았습니다. 
화이팅! <웃음> 일단은 금융열이 정말 장난 아니라는 거를 다시 한번 느꼈고 무엇보다 선생님들도 다 하라고 하라고 시키고 그러고 있지만 좀 안쓰러운 마음은 진짜 다들 있으신 것 같아요 그래서 저희의 역할은 여러분들이 그 힘든 시기를 조금이라도 더잘 진나게 해주고 싶은 그런 역할이 중요하지 않을까 라는 생각이 들었습니다 여러분 화이팅! 조금만 힘내세요!